delighted to have you joining us for worship today. Let me tell you, this is a special day, for this is Resurrection Sunday, and this is a moment of celebration, simply because Jesus is alive. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, I am the one who lives and died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And so today we celebrate a risen Savior. And through Him we have been given new life, eternal life, and abundant life. And so I hope that right there where you are, you'll join in on this celebration. Because not only is this a day of celebration, this is a day of transformation. For the spirit of him who raised up Christ from the dead is right there where you are. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace, the roadway to righteousness, and he is the gateway to glory. The psalmist says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave. He is the resurrected Lord, and his name is Jesus. And if you'll reach out to him today, he will change your life in such a radical way. And so join in and let's celebrate this risen Savior together. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. For Lord, it is truly a special day and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We celebrate today Jesus Christ, God's Son and the Savior of the world. We thank you that through Him and through His resurrection, there is life, new life, eternal life, abundant life. We have so much to celebrate, Lord, but today we celebrate You and Your goodness, Your blessings, and the great gift of salvation that You have given us. Be glorified, Father, through our praise and through our worship. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord would flow in every home and in every heart. Let this be a moment, Lord, of radical and wonderful transformation, emotionally, physically, and most of all, spiritually. Bless your people, Father. Let this be a day of miracles. For, Lord, we recognize that this season is a season of miracles. And we rejoice in the greatest miracle of all, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray and believe for this together. Amen. Our praise team is going to lead us in worship right there in your home with your family. You sing, you worship, and let's celebrate this resurrected Lord together.
angels all around My delight is found in knowing That you wear the victor's crown You're my help and my defender You're my savior and my friend By your grace I live and breathe to worship you In your name I will bow down In your presence fear is silent For you wear the victor's crown Let your glory fill this temple Let your power overflow By your grace I live and breathe to worship you
you are living today, Lord. That is why we celebrate the season that we're in, Jesus. Thank you for the cross.
Folks, I want you to take your Bibles today and turn with us over to Mark chapter 16. I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. Now, when Jesus was risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. And she went and told them that had been with Jesus as they mourned and wept, and when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, they believed it not. After that, Jesus appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, the others, and neither believed they them. Afterward, he, Jesus, appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after that he was risen. And Jesus said unto them, Now you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if any deadly thing that happens will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and there sat on the right hand of God. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So be it. Let it continue to happen. Let it happen today. I want to tell you something about Easter. Easter made the unbelievable undeniable. In Mark 16, 9, you'll see here that Jesus first rose from the grave. Unbelievable, but Mary saw him and it was undeniable. He appeared unto one that knew him well, Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons and she knew that the unbelievable had become undeniable. The one who had exercised evil out of her life was now alive and well and still working in this world. The one who had delivered from the works of demons was alive and well and still working in this world. The one who had taken a tormented life and transformed it is still alive and well and working in the world. So today Easter shouts at you and shouts at you and shouts at you and shouts at me and shouts at the whole wide world saying death can still give way to life. That sin can still be replaced by righteousness that failure can still be transformed into victory. That curses can still be displaced by blessings. That hell can be supplanted and defeated by heaven. And that mourning and sadness can still become rejoicing and gladness. 
Easter takes the unbelievable and makes it undeniable. See, I was raised in a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. And I could look up in the pulpit every Sunday morning and I could see a pastor who had lived a rough, tough life before Christ. He used to run liquor between Clinton and Wilmington. When he got married, he had a pistol in his back pocket. He used to steal and thieve. But then he met Jesus and his life was transformed and the unbelievable became the undeniable. I was raised in a Bible-believing church, a spirit-filled congregation. And I could look over to my right and see two men that used to be alcoholics drinking every chance they got and see them dressed in nice suits and singing and praising the Lord, always in attendance and rejoicing because God had changed them, had made them a new creation in Christ Jesus. And in their lives, the unbelievable had become the undeniable. This Easter, God wants you to take the unbelievable and let it become undeniable in your life by exercising faith in Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter two, when Peter spoke to that congregation that had gathered when they were, became spirit-filled, they said, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the promise is to you and to your children, to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. You may be one of those people that people have just written off Think that you can never change. You may have circumstances or situ situations that you think are hellish and will never change. But listen, Easter says that the unbelievable can become undeniable through Jesus Christ. And I hope that you'll let that happen for you today. And that's why we're broadcasting this message. You see, since we have seen the unbelievable become the undeniable, since we have received the unbelievable in our own hearts and lives so that it's undeniable, now we have a new commission. Jesus said in verse 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see, we, are, we are, have a new path and it's my path and your path. It, it simply is everywhere with everyone we meet, we're to be showing them the unbelievable in our life has become undeniable. Our preaching is not one of judgment and condemnation. It's one of good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As Christians now, we make converts. Jesus said in verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That word is sosa. And that word means transformed. It means prosperous. It means new. It means blessed. It means saved. Salvation is the reward of believing. That's the opportunity that Christ offers every one of us the opportunity to become part of God's forever family. 
And then baptism becomes our response to that. It's an act of obedience. It verifies that we took that decision seriously and it validates the fact that just as that water has uh, wet us all over, that our whole life will now show that Christ-like impression. Now, as Christians, we have a new competency. In verses 17 and 18, Jesus says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we walk with the power of attorney today. In Jesus' name, we do affirmative works. We do works that are transforming and renewing and delivering as we proclaim God's word. And then we, we leave people with signs of power and authority. The devil leaves. The sickness leaves and uh, there's a divine protection and provision. That's the product of God's works in our lives. And then because of Easter, we Christians have a new confidence. In verse 19, the Bible says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. You see the words that they heard, we read. And so we have the message of the master in this book. In this Bible, we have a divine revelation about who he is and who we are in him. And in our hearts, we have the wonder that they saw as he was transformed and, and ascended into heaven, we see that same power and feel that same power in our innermost man. We've become born again, folks. We've received a divine nature. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. The old life has passed away and behold, all things become new. Then finally, as Christians, we now have a new commitment. You can't get saved and not have a new commitment to the Lord. Verse 20 says, and they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Let it be for you and for me. You see, Christians will acknowledge God's plan that we are his ambassadors. We are salt and light. We are his messengers, his testifiers, his, his preachers in this present world. We accept the path. Whatever we do, whether we're a teacher or a lawyer or a farmer, we, we go our path doing our work, but we go in the name of Jesus and we go as Christians and we tell everybody everywhere. And then we have a partnership that we acclaim that he will never leave us nor forsake us and that through him we can do his work still and we can pray for people right there in the neighborhood, right there in the community, right there in Walmart, right there in church, right there in our own homes and families. And God will work through us. And this preaching is authenticated for he'll back up our efforts and our teaching and our preaching and our messaging He'll back them up, confirming the word with signs following. 
So let me tell you again, Easter makes the unbelievable undeniable. That's why in verse 9, he tells us that when Jesus arose on that first day, he didn't go hide in a corner. He didn't sneak back to heaven. He found one that knew him intimately, Mary Magdalene, that knew him and loved him with all her heart, for he had cast out seven demons from her life. He had transformed her circumstances, and she knew him to be her Savior and Lord, the one who exorcised evil then was alive and well again and still working in this world. The one who delivered from the works of demons was back alive and well and still working in this world. The one who had taken tormented lives and renewed them and and transformed them is alive again. And he's well and still working in this world. So today, you listen to me. This is why we celebrate Easter. Easter shouts to you and to me and to you and to you and to you and to the whole world that death can still give way to life. That sin can still be replaced by righteousness. That failure can still be transformed into victory, that curses can still be replaced and displaced by blessings, that hell can be supplanted by heaven and mourning and sadness in your life can become rejoicing and gladness. You see, at Kingdom Place where Bailey and I pastor We have a Bible-believing church, a spirit-filled congregation, and I can look right out there every Sunday morning when we gather and see a couple of folks that used to be involved with the low life and the bad life, the drug life, used to be involved in all sorts of things and spent their time in jail. But today... Because of Jesus, the unbelievable has become undeniable. And both of them are born again believers and preachers of the gospel. I can look to the center of my congregation and see folks who have been delivered from marriages that were about to break up and and transformed and renewed into spouses that love one another. I can look over and see someone that was in central prison, but today is out walking and talking in the name of Jesus. That's the message of Easter. The unbelievable can become the undeniable. And that's why Paul writes in Romans chapter 10 and says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and will believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, friend, let your faith, let your faith turn to Jesus. And ask him to let the unbelievable become the undeniable in your life. Ask him to save you. Make you that new creation. Ask him to rebuke this disease and give you a healthy body. Ask him to bless your family and restore the love that you once knew. Ask him to open up the windows of heaven and pour out financial blessings upon you because Easter shouts it loud through Jesus Christ believing with your heart the unbelievable can become for you the undeniable. Let's pray. Father, thank you 
that with God all things are possible. And thank you that if we can believe, all things become possible for us. Touch every heart, every life that is calling upon you today. And Lord, give them the miracle they seek. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.